everyone and welcome to English Teachers React. Now, uh, someone came across uh, on the internet or on um, an interview with Matteo Renzi, uh, with the Matteo Renzi delivered to the BBC in 2016 after the news of Brexit that is going to happen. Uh, we all know that Matteo Renzi is not really good at English, so I decided to do a video of English teachers react. Now, obviously, we're not, I'm not going to make fun of Matteo because I am the leader teacher of the school, all you can learn is This is a, a, ling a language school, okay? So we teach English, Spanish, French, German and Italian for foreign years and it's against all our mission to make fun of anyone who speaks a language, a foreign language, not properly. Because our mission is not to make fun of people, but to make their English or their foreign language better. So I'm going to treat Matteo as one of my students. And we are going to see what mistakes he has made and how he could do better. Okay, so let's go. This was the first reaction, shock. Shock because uh, in our mind, uh, everything is totally connected with the uh, UK. Okay, so uh, probably he could have started with a better sentence uh, because this thing, this our first reaction, shock, uh, is not the best way to start something in English. Uh, in Italian, when we uh, are using a very good language, we tend to leave out subjects and we always try not to start a sentence from ourself or subject. But English is one of those languages that cannot leave the subject apart. So it is better to always start with a subject. So say first reaction is not exactly the best way, but he could have said something like, at first we were shocked or uh, it was shocking at first, and you start with it. If you don't feel too much confident, I would always suggest you to start with a subject that can be I, you, my reaction was, so that you always start your sentence in a correct direction. And it's also much easier to construct the reminiscence of the sentence. The sound because it's obviously Matteo trying to make the sound more English as Italian has more rounded vowels and in this perspective English has more musicality than Italian. Um, so a u gives us the sound o, so you go for because, same as audio or Australia. Ah, the last mistake that um, Matteo makes in this uh, cluster is talking about UK. So everything is connected with UK. Uh, you needed the article the because UK stands for United Kingdom. But when you're talking about a cluster or a group of nations in geography, you needed the article the. So you go for the UK, the USA, the Emirates, United Arab. Okay. Next. Obviously. This decision is a decision. Brexit is Brexit. The people of UK decided the, the way for the future. Now the situation is that. Okay. The first word is something that I didn't understand. Probably he wanted to say absolutely, and then in mid of the word, he just decided that he wanted to say nevertheless. So it came out of now verbal that doesn't make any sense. It is absolutely normal. I mean, it, it happens also when we speak in our native language. Oral production is never easy. Uh, there is another mistake that Matteo makes uh, that is saying uh, the people. We never use article in front of uh, plural nouns uh, unless uh, we are talking about something specific like the people that are going to the cinema. Okay, so he should have, he said, the people of UK, and he should have said, people of the UK. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he says the situation is that, it's the situation is this, because that stands long far away from us. We can and we have to build the best alliance between UK and EU for the future. 
This was a pretty much correct sentence. The pronunciation is always a lot Italian, but we, we need, we must. It's build, but clearly Matteo Renzi at this moment has a cold, so probably it's just a nasal consonant not working. Alliance is correct. We have to build the best alliance. That was fine. Because we will be the best friends for the next years, Okay, because we will be the best friend, again, is a misuse of the article. Uh, you don't need a definite article in this case. Italian use a definite article way more than England or English in general. So it would be, we're going to be, or we will be best friends. That's all. And at the same time, I think this decision could push European leaders to invest in a new way for Europe. This was a pretty good sentence, but there is a misuse of the modal could. When we are talking about something that we think it can happen, he should have said that this situation may push leaders, etc., etc., because could is more related to ability and not to possibility. This is a difference between models of ability and models of possibility. Do you think that more should have been done to try to keep the UK on board? Because, you know, you said you couldn't imagine an EU without the UK. Now you are going to have an EU without the UK. Shouldn't more have been done? I tried. This is not the best way to start an answer to a question that was pretty generic because the interviewer asked, do you think more should have been done? Uh, she is using an impersonal sentence in order to not uh, put any subject and is putting himself uh, as the first subject because he starts with, I tried. She was not asking him, she was asking to a more generic situation and probably a group of leaders. And now I don't know if she was speaking about Italian or Italy, Italian government, or she was speaking about the EU. This gives me more the idea that probably Matteo misunderstood the question, which again is something very likely. Um, he is not using any interpreter and the interviewer speaks a very good, obviously, and a straight English and she's speaking very fast. So maybe uh, he misunderstood the question. With the, an article, with the initiative, with the Okay, here we have again pronunciation. I try with an article. Um, I don't know if it's talking about law. So if it's about law, article is not the word that he wanted to use because article is only for newspapers and magazine. And I don't think that Matteo have ever, has ever wrote, has ever written a magazine or something. Um, initiative, uh, that's the correct pronunciation, not initiative. With a political process but in the political process not process what do you, the problem was one problem okay again this is missing the subject when you go for the problem was one problem this is a typical mistake that italian make when they are thinking in italian and producing a conversation in english i know it's very hard but we always advise our students to think in english if you think in english even with the English that you know, it's always better because you will start with the fundaments of your sentence and then you just build up a sentence that works. Well, since Italian and English have different construct and different way of constructing a word or a sentence, sorry, not a word, uh, when you start in Italian, then you move to English, then you just realize that the sentence in English is not working. So this is a typical mistake. He is just thinking in Italian because obviously he uh, should have started with something like the problem was this or the problem and then he should construct the sentence around this problem. But he's shifting from subject to subject. Where David Cameron decided to use referendum to solve some internal problem I would make an appraisal here to Matteo because he said when the camera decided to use the referendum to solve. So he is using two instead of four, which is something that it's correct. What he does is correct. Many people say, um, I used it for going. No, it's wrong. You need to use two when you're talking about it, your, your end 
uh, and your solution, what you want to do. This was the problem. This was the problem. Okay, so basically, again, he was thinking in Italian. So he started again and then he ended the sentence with this was the problem. This is the thing that he was saying at the very beginning of the sentence. Italian allows uh, the possibility to create a very long sentences. So you can shift from a subject that you said at the end, you mentioned at the beginning of the sentence, and then you mention it again at the end of the sentence. And in Italian, it's something that completely works. In English, unfortunately, it doesn't. Um, but this is just, again, thinking in Italian instead of thinking in English. We cannot use the foreign affairs to solve internal problems. So we cannot use the foreign affairs to solve internal problems. This is a sentence that honestly works perfectly. Um, I think that this is anyway not what Matteo meant because um, obviously Mr. Cameron didn't use a foreign affairs to solve some internal problems, um, not by creating a referendum. So probably uh, the expression of um, the interviewer that I'm seeing right now on the screen, it's probably that, that she's not understanding this. I think that Matteo meant something completely different, uh, but as an English teacher, what I can say is that the structure of the sentence was perfect, especially the use of cannot instead of say can't, because when we're speaking and when we're speaking at a certain level of English, it's way better to express all the words and not using the contractions, which are not meant as to be informal, but using cannot instead of can't or can't better um, is always a good solution. The decision of British people uh, is a bad decision in my mind, and I'm sad for that, but... Um, you wouldn't say in my mind, you say it's a bad decision uh, in my opinion. Um, and I'm sad for that. Uh, clearly he wanted to say something, something else, but he couldn't come up with a better term. That could be, I am, um, I am feeling sorrow for this. Um, I am sad. Yes, it's a pretty basic, but nevertheless, it leads you to, um, to what he meant anyway. If we don't accept the result of referendum, the risk is give the message, vote is not a good thing. Okay, here is a mistake in using the if clause. So if say if, blah, 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 then you need will. And unfortunately, again, I'm just thinking in Italian, so he's shifting subject. So we say if we don't accept whatever the vote, the risk is, uh, this is typical Italian. Uh, it should be something like, if we don't accept the vote, etc., etc., we will give the impression. This is a correct sentence. And the vote is not good, probably this, again, is not what he meant, but he couldn't come up with a better synonym. Uh, he could say that the vote doesn't count, or the vote doesn't matter, because he's not talking about the vote singularly, but he's talking about principle. Democracy is not an asset for this uh, continent, and this is impossible. So you think it's definitely going to happen? For me, yes. Again, for me, it's typical Italian. So instead of saying for me, yes, he uh, should have said something like, I think so. When you are asked the, a question and the answer is yes, sir, or it's a question about your opinion, it's always best to say, I think so. Instead of saying for me, yeah, for me, yes, it's typical Italian, actually. Uh, you say, in my opinion, I think, uh, so in my opinion, yes, that could be something, or I think so, it's always the best way. And how should it happen? I mean, obviously, Britain has to trigger Article 50 for official talks to start. In what mood should they be? I mean, how tough should they be? When British people, British government uh, will decide to open Article 50, I think we, we will work as soon as possible. Okay, this was a very good dependent and independent sentences because if it says when the British government will open, etc., etc., we will, or I think we will, this is perfect. In an only one way. Uh... In an only one way, that's to 
many propositions and articles, so you can say in only one way. Uh, to solve every problem, but will be impossible give. There is a missing subject and there is a mistake in the infinitive. It will impossible to give. Typical Italian because we can leave subject out. So yes, it's pretty normal. Again, this is merely thinking in Italian and automatically translating English. Uh, to British people, more rights than uh, the older people out of EU. So we're clearly talking about the freedom of movement here, right? I mean, so there are, um, there are those in the United Kingdom who would like to stay and have very good access to the single market, um, but they don't want to allow the freedom of movement, so the ability for all EU citizens to have access to the labour market. And aren't you asking for flexibility in the Eurozone? Couldn't you allow flexibility for the UK when it comes to freedom of movement? I think this is a very uh, interesting debate because uh, this debate will be a debate about uh, the, the, the concept. Okay. Uh, mm. There is too many repetitions about a debate, so I think this is an interesting debate. Debate is probably the wrong word, uh, because debate uh, is considered, for example, in a classroom, when I have uh, two students, uh, have them taking part about a, pro a problem, such as uh, video games are a waste of time, and in order to enhance their conversation, I will have one student against, so thinking that uh, video games are not a waste of time and the student thinks that uh, video games are actually a waste of time and I have them discussing and uh, tell them, have them tell pros and cons of what they think. Uh, this is more debate. What is happening here? It's not a debate. Probably he should have said point. This is interesting point. And then again you should say because, and you would just start with another sentence without starting again what the point is. As I said, it's an interesting debate because the debate is etc. etc. Of rules in the EU. But uh, when UK will decide the opening of uh, Article 50, we will discuss about it. Okay, there is a mistake here with preposition. The verb discuss doesn't need a preposition, but I wouldn't be so rough on Renzi, to be honest, because also George W. Bush Jr. used it um, several times. He said, the, the problem we discussed about, discuss doesn't need any preposition, so you discuss the problem, and we say, we will discuss it. This is what Renzi should have said. Um, typical mis Italian mistake, again, because you think that discuss means discussione, uh, discussione in Italian involves uh, also strong feelings, so people that are angry and talking about something. No, in English, discuss, discussion, to discuss, it's just a confronting two different ideas and there is no strong feeling involved. If there is a strong feeling involved, it's an argument, okay? So yes, you can argue about something. But you don't discuss about something. Okay. Do you think you might be leading those discussions? The other two European powers, Germany, France, distracted by falling popularity polls for Angela Merkel, François Hollande, and upcoming elections. The assumption at the moment is Article 50 could be triggered in the new year. That could leave you in the hot seat. What will you be saying to Theresa May? I think the role, the leading role, will be in the hands of the uh, European Commission. Again, a problem of pronunciation. I think the leading roles will be in the hands, not ends, which is the finishing part of something. We need to use the H. Um, again, typical Italian, we don't pronounce the H and we don't have this sound, so to us, doesn't really sound differently. Not in the single states. Personally, I will be very ready to work with Teresa and other colleagues to support. Okay, so pronunciation. Personally, uh, I will be ready, we don't say very ready, um, to support, not support, and uh, the word co-workers is Colleagues, not colleagues. It's very difficult process because it's the first time, so it's not easy. The UK hasn't 
triggered Article 50 yet. We don't really know when it will trigger it. But what's the mood amongst your other EU leaders? There is the need to solve as soon as possible the problem of UK because we, we employed the last two years about Brexit. This was pretty much a good sentence. There is the need, that's very good. Uh, unfortunately, he said hears instead of ears, but it was absolutely fine, okay, apart from some pronunciation mistakes. From 2015 to today, for the first uh, months of 2015 to today, we, we discussed a lot of times about Brexit. Again, we discussed a lot of times about Brexit. We discussed Brexit many times, a lot of times. It's not really, but you could say several times, for example. So now it's time to, to, to solve the question. At the same time, there is a, a sentiment of sadness. Sentiment of sadness, again, it's pretty much basic. You could say a sentiment of sorrow but the message is pretty clear. So the mood is emotionally a uh, sad mood? The mood is emotionally sad mood. Again, this is too much Italian. You would just say the mood is not one of the best and you wouldn't need the adverb emotionally as we are talking about emotions because it's mood. Okay, so the video is over. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please give us a thumb up. I have just delivered to you what is our approach to the conversation. It's not exactly like that, but this is how we treat it. If I had to give a mark to, to Matteo, I would place Matteo between an A2 level and a B1 level. He has a pretty much good use of lexis and vocabulary, but he still makes some minor mistakes. The pronunciation is all clearly something that he needs to work on, uh, but he is not so bad. He still falls for some false friend like employee, because he said uh, we employed, uh, uh, employ is a verb only related to work, so it's not something that he should have used, he should have used something like we took, or something else. Mm -hmm. To be honest, uh, for being 46, at the time he wasn't 46, because this is a video four years ago, so he was 42, um, speaks a decent uh, English that obviously needs improvement, but uh, my opinion would be uh, there is room for improvement. So if you think that uh, Matteo is pretty much your level, or you think that you are a bit more than Matteo, remember that, in our opinion, there is room for improvement, so you can always take an English course in order to fix and uh, rearrange your vocabulary, your structure. Maybe you should work some on your pronunciation, because many sounds of the English are not clear to our ear, and so you need a teacher that explains you exactly what is the sound and what is the problem with your pronunciation, why you don't understand something or not. If you're interested in a course with us, obviously this is our email address. Facebook page, Instagram page, please follow us. This is the beginning of 2021, why not starting the new year with a new you and an English course. So thank you very much for being with us, hope to see you soon and bye bye!